If you live in Canada, I'm guessing that you've heard about the CRA hack. The CRA is the equivalent of the IRS in Canada, and they were recently breached and has caused a number of individuals quite a lot of pain as they've had government benefits applied for in their name and it's not gone into their bank account. And they're in a bit of a pinch to get all that taken care of. If that sounds of interest and you want to see what happened and how to avoid it, this video is for you. My name is Dave Mason. I'm the CEO of Shift IT Solutions based in Oakville, Ontario, Canada. And the CRA was breached and now I want to tell you how to avoid being stuck in a scheme like this because it can be very painful and be very costly and can get you on the hook with your government. So what happened was it was known as a credential stuffing attack. So what that is, is hackers surf the web for stolen credentials. And then when they find them, they try reusing those credentials elsewhere and see what happens. Because I know, I'll bet you dollars to donuts that if you're watching this video, you reuse credentials just like almost everybody on the planet. I'd love to tell you, you need to come up with unique credentials for every website you ever go to, but I know you're not gonna follow that advice because it's not terribly practical. So how to avoid this? First thing you need to do is you need to come up with a unique set of credentials that you use across various platforms if you're not gonna come up with a unique one for everything. Segregate it in terms of sensitivity and importance. So the password that you use for financial institutions, if you're not gonna, if you're gonna use the same password, make it only as part of those FIs because those FIs do a better job of protecting those credentials than the uh, Daily Deal website that you might subscribe to. So when you use only those credentials at FIs, your chances of those credentials being breached go down and your impact, if they are breached at an FI, is very high. So you wanna make sure that you're avoiding you reusing credentials and wherever possible, put in two-factor authentication. That's where you log in and it's like, send me a text with a code and you put in the code. That's what you wanna be doing wherever possible, especially when money is involved. I know it's a bit of a hassle, I get that. You can have multiple sets of passwords that you use for maybe sites that are a little bit sensitive, but not quite financial institutions or don't deal with money and then sort of go down the chain from there to ones you know, you just sign up for something and you don't really care about it and it's no big deal if it gets compromised. The mistake people make is, they use the same credential for that site as they do for their bank, and then we have a problem. So the hacker finds these stolen credentials as a result of breaches like LinkedIn or Marriott for sale on the dark web. They buy them, they just start putting in information into sensitive sites like banks. They don't know who you bank with, but you know in Canada there's only six or seven choices, so it's pretty easy to go to each site. CRA, your uh, taxation entity, whatever country you happen to live in, start putting in credentials into those sites. Bingo, I have a winner. Now I can manipulate it. I can divert refunds into my own bank account. I can apply for programs that you're not eligible for. There's a ton of things that can happen when you do that. So you have to, if you're not gonna have unique credentials for everything, and you're not gonna use a password manager, you need to segregate your passwords. It, it makes a lot of sense. And again, as difficult to guess as possible, right? Some good combinations are uh, come up with an adjective and a noun and a number and uh, a, a special character that you use and sort of mix combinations of those. And, you know, they come up with, uh, there's lots of different patterns that make it easier for you to remember and harder to guess. So figure out a strategy that works. You can Google it, there's a ton but segregating those passwords will really help if you have a credential that's stolen. The second thing you can do is use a program that scans the dark web. We use one called ID Agent, and that looks for your stolen credentials on the dark web. You put your domain in and people pick it up from the dark web when it's been breached, 
and you get notified. There's nothing you can do once that password is out in the wild. In fact, we've used that product at trade shows and people will come by our, our booth and will actually run their domain. And in some cases, that individual will see their password stolen and in clear. And they're like, oh my God, that's my password. And they get very, we've had people get angry at us. And we're like, we didn't do anything. We just simply are showing you what is out there and available. There's nothing you can do about it. It's like making uh, a video that you wish you never posted on YouTube when you were 21. It exists on the internet forever. You can't get rid of it. Same thing, once that credential's stolen and it's out there, it's out there for good. You have to change everywhere else that is because it's already in the wild. So that's a good tool to use. Gets you notification of breach. There's usually a gap between an exploit where people steal the data from a database that's been compromised and start credential stuffing where they start to give get you as an individual and start putting in your individual credentials in places they think they may be able to exploit. There's a gap there and if you get notified in that time period, you're good. And then again, some other things you can do is the uh, password manager. So you put in secure passwords uh, into a program and then you interface with that program. You definitely want to have two-factor authentication on, on that. Anything to do with money and has two-factor authentic authentication available, choose that option. It's a bit of a pain, but it, it is well worth it. So I hope you found those, those tips valuable. It really makes sense that I really want you to be out there protecting yourself because it just sucks to be in this situation. If you found that valuable, please like this video on whatever platform you're watching it on. If you like things like this, you'll find more on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe. If you want to send me a message either on social media or via email, please do so. I'll answer your question, and if it's relevant, I'll even make another video about it. I thank you for your time, and I hope this helps. Once again, my name is Dave Mason.